Let me just start off by saying that this is not professional advice and I'm not a car mechanic. So if you're looking for a video that does everything exactly by the books, then this probably isn't a video for you. And I would recommend that you go down to your local garage or pick up a Haynes manual. Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to diagnose and potentially fix an engine misfire in your car. So I'm gonna be walking through a process of checking fault holes using the pedal test method, how to change your spark plugs, your coil pack, and how to check which cylinder is actually experiencing a misfire. I'm also gonna be showing you how to change your injectors as well. A quick and easy way to test which cylinder is causing your misfire is by unplugging each one of the injectors on the engine and testing which one doesn't affect the running of the engine. So using this test we've identified which cylinder is experiencing an issue and it could be a number of problems causing this. It could be that injector number 3 is faulty or clogged and isn't injecting fuel into the engine causing the misfire or it could be the spark plugs or the coil pack. And worst case scenario it could actually be a problem with the engine itself. So you're looking at worn pistons or broken piston or something similar to that or even a faulty head gasket. So there's a wide range of issues that could actually cause it, but I'm just gonna go over the basics, which are the common causes of misfires that can be easily repaired. Now I'm gonna show you a trick that works on most Vauxhall courses that you can use to diagnose a fault with your car without having to buy an expensive testing kit. All right. In order to do the pedal test, you wanna put the key in the ignition and then put both of your feet on the brake pedal and accelerate the pedal hard all the way down to the ground. Then you want to turn the key all the way to the second position in the ignition. And then you'll see on the engine light, just beneath the engine warning light, you'll see a service light, which should be flashing in a pattern. So the number of times that this light flashes, if I can get in focus, will be able to give you the indication of what error codes your engine is experiencing. There's a pause in between the light flashing that shows you when you're moving on to the next number. So for example, if you were to get 10 flashes in the first one, that would be a zero. If you got three in the second, that would be three and then so on. So there'll be a pause in between each number so that you're able to count it properly. So I just tested this now and it wasn't actually working. And that's because I had the battery of the car unplugged for a period of time. So if you want the engine to be able to read the error codes, you need to have the engine running for a period of time so that the ECU can actually figure out what's wrong with the car. So I've done that now. I've had the engine running for a minute or so and I'm gonna switch it back on again. So what you can do with the codes that you read using this method is look them up online and there's plenty of websites that will be able to tell you what the exact problem of your car is just by reading these codes. So we've got error code 300 now and that means it's a multiple or random cylinder misfire. Code 303 means it's cylinder 3 that the misfire is happening on, so that confirms our suspicion before from the, the test we did earlier in the video that the misfire was caused by cylinder 3. If the problem was related to injector number 3, we would also receive an additional code relating to the injector circuit or that specific injector. Now I'm going to show you how to replace your coil pack and your spark plugs. I'm going to start by removing the battery. This might not be necessary but I always do this for peace of mind whenever I'm working on a bonnet of my car.
Removing the coil pack is easy. You simply undo the two torque screws on the top of it and unplug the connector to the right hand side and you should be able to pull it right off the engine. So right now I'm prying out the coil pack with my fingers but you can probably use a tool to make this easier and once you've got this out it's as simple as buying a replacement one and putting it back the same way you took it out. Right, to be able to remove your spark plugs which are under the coil pack you need a spark plug remover tool and I bought this one for around £20 I think from Halfords. So this attaches onto your regular socket tool and you can use it to unscrew the spark plugs and lift it out of the engine. As you can see, this spark plug is fairly clean and it's actually only about three or four months old. Now moving on to the cylinder where our misfire is, you'll be able to see that there will be a bit more deposit on the spark plug from unburnt fuel building up on it. And I'd actually cleaned the spark plug before filming this video. So if the spark plug was the cause of your misfire, simply changing the faulty spark plug and putting everything back together again would solve the problem. So it's worth trying. Now I'm going to show you how to change your injectors. And I think for diesel cars, if you change your injectors, you have to recode them to, to prevent issues developing later on down the line. But as far as I know, this doesn't need to be done with petrol cars. And if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments below and help out other people who might be watching this and planning to do this on their own car. It's best practice when changing injectors to change all of them at the same time. So if you're gonna go for a use set, it might be a good idea to find a complete rail of injectors on eBay that have been taken from a working car. And I did this on this car a few months ago when I had a problem with one of my injectors and I replaced all of them and that solved the issue for me. Just to keep you up to date with what I'm doing, I've removed the hose that's connecting to the top of the throttle body and I've put that to one side and now I'm unscrewing the throttle body itself and I'm going to remove the cover of it and put that to another side. Once I've done that, I will then remove the four screws that are holding the throttle body down to the engine. Now it's time to depressurize the fuel system and this is a really important step to take if you don't want to get hit in the face by a flying injector. So what you need to do is remove the cover of this valve that you usually find on the, it, it looks like the valve that you get on the car tire to inflate it and there'll be a pin in there that you can just insert um, a screwdriver and push 
that pin and that will release some of the petrol that's in the system and depressurize it so that um, you can safely remove the injectors. So I'm just using a napkin here to stop the petrol from spraying all over the engine as I press it. Now it's time to unscrew the injector reel and there's two screws holding it down. You just want to take off both of them and then unclip the wires that are connected to the rail as well. Now you should be able to remove the injector wheel. Here you can see that the injector of the cylinder that had a misfire is notably, noticeably darker than the other injectors. And this is because fuel was being injected into that cylinder but not being used up. Now you have easy access to the injector rail. You can easily remove the injectors by un undoing the clips on them and then you should be able to pull them out and put your replacement ones in. And I'm also going to show you the replacement rail that I brought off eBay that I was able to use to fix this car the last time it had injection issues. Here's what the rail looked like. It was taken from another Vauxhall Corsa of a similar age. It's a different design but the injectors were the same and it solved the problem for me. Putting the clips back onto the injector and connecting it to the injector roll again is a bit tricky but you get the hang of it and you should be able to fit all of the new ones back in and then reassemble the engine so that you're able to drive your working car or hopefully working car. To put everything back together simply follow all the steps that we did to take it apart but going backwards again and when I was putting Every time that I've tried to put the injector roll back in, I found it too difficult to do it by hand. So I've used that um, spark plug tool just to gently tap it back into place again. And it's important to make sure that the screws of the injector roll line up properly because it's very easy to screw them in the wrong direction and ruin the thread of it. And that could probably be a major issue down the line because I'm not sure how you'd fix something like that. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please like it and subscribe and I'd love to hear if you were able to fix your own car using this advice so if you did please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.